Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys did enjoy the last series about Substance Designer and how to bring all that stuff into Arnold and render that there. Uh, but today's video will focus on fur because it was also very uh, requested. And I told you guys I am not a groomer so I won't be showing you any grooming tutorials. But today you are in luck because I will show you a simple way of grooming. And to all the groomers out there, please don't feel offended by my techniques. This is uh, just something to show how I just did this tiger for instance. So it's pretty basic. It, it uses XGen, XGen Interactive Grooms. And I will just show you very simple how I created this tiger pattern, tiger fur, and you can see it's like the groom is pretty bad. Um, but anyway, so let's jump right into it. This is a basic simple scene, nothing going on just yet. So I just created the plane and I will continue from scratch. So let's first create a simple plane and I, I want to try to create this uh, tiger back again. So um, to get this working, I really did some cheats, I guess. Um, it's It wasn't really a tiger, it was just like a bent plane, which I will just do again. So it's a, a nonlinear deformer, it's a bend modifier, and I'll just start bending the back of this plane so it resembles kind of a round surface similar to a tiger's back or whatever, something round like this. This was enough. You could also do some sculpt or obviously uh, if you have a tiger you can actually use that as well. Um, but I just want to show you the principles and as always I don't show you the high-end rendering or something like that. I just show you um, how to set it up and you guys are there to do the magic. You should be doing the high fancy renders. I'm just showing you how to do it and you should do it. Okay so this is now a bit too much but we will bend it the other way and then we should have this kind of bend back and then it goes um, back to the tail and the legs. So this is kind of what I want to create. And if I want to get fancy, I could actually bend this guy. Let's just do this quickly. Um, I don't have too much time because this will be a longer tutorial. So I just try to rush it a bit. But if you if you don't follow, you obviously you can press pause, go back, check what I did again, and follow along. So I'm just trying to create this round back, which bends, which bends where the tail is kind of. So um, let's see if we can get this working. I think I need to work with the low bounds, these guys. Uh, let's bring this guy back in. There we go. And we need to make it a bit smaller so we have a higher frequency. Um, well, something like that. Let's just bring the other one a bit higher. I think that is pretty good. Okay, so let's just press, um, I think it's Alt, Shift, and D to delete all the history and then bring this guy up. So this is now my tiger fur or my tiger back, right? So, or whatever, it could be a dog, something like that. So I'm, I keep saving just uh, to make sure nothing happens. So this is my base geo, right? So this should be your base of anything like if you have hair or you've got fur or you've got a carpet or whatever you have your base texture or your base surface and I just want to um, subdivide this just to give it a bit more iterations so I would go to um, I think it's a mesh is it mesh smooth I rarely do this yeah that's the one I wanted so just to make it a bit softer alt shift uh, alt shift D to delete history again and uh, the first, uh, the next step would be to open up the XGen stuff. So it is in, it, if you press spacebar, it is in uh, generate. And then it would be the interactive groom editor. And I've got this here on my side already. And this is how it looks like. So now let's start to create the interactive grooms. Right, so select the geo and then you go to create interactive groom splines. And then you can obviously call it whatever you want. I'll just call this guy fur. And you have your base density, your length, your width, and what all these fancy stuff. So CV count is important if you want to have uh, some noise pattern, something which is more high frequency. But we get into that later. So this is now the basic setup, right? So for fur, I guess this is a bit too short. Um, so we can directly change the length. We could do it in the, uh, in the fur base and change the scale somewhere. 
or in right in here so you can change the scale to make this guy longer um, but for now i want to stick with one and i just want to show you my way of doing things so on default there's always a sculpt layer and a sculpt layer is similar to mudbox where you can do tweaks create a new layer create new tweaks and then you can blend them together um, but what i want to do is i want to create a guide layer first before i work on the on the sculpt so to do that I cl uh, click on the description and go to create or add modifier and I want to add a guide and a guide is a a another groom way which um, controls the direction of the initial groom so click on the guide and then on the right in the attribute editor you have input guide and then there's the option to create so you can also make them dynamic if you have wind or something like that uh, but that's something too much for this tutorial so I create uh, I click on create and I create a, uh, get a completely new description inside of my fur base. So with a new base, a new scale, and a new sculpt. Um, so let's see how this works. So I, in here I should have ex actually also um, my mask and my scale and my input guides. I'm not sure why I don't see my base grooms. So there's one now. That's interesting. I was supposed to see a bit more of these guys. Not sure if this is just a viewport issue. Let's just see to if I can update this. So now you can see that we have just a few guides. This is pretty weird. We should have way more than that. Let's just see if we can actually move them. If I go to uh, generate and then we have the interactive grooming tools and I just tear off this menu and I've got the menu right here with all my uh, controls. So let's go to the scalp layer, this guy, and hit edit. So now we're in the edit mode of the um, guide curves, and I want to create a calm tool. And make sure collide with meshes is on, otherwise your hair would penetrate. Yeah, I think this is actually a problem. It's not really displaying all my guide curves because, um, as you can see, that's very detail detailed, but I only see a few. So there's something, a, a bug or something. So let's go back to the in base and go back to one density. Let's go even back to point one density um, and see what we get now. You see now, if I brush here, a big region gets controlled. Um, normally you would see all the guide curves, but currently we don't. I'm not sure why, but anyways, I'll just um, groom now my fur in one base direction, like like it would be normally, I guess. Obviously, you could check references how the groom behaves normally. Um, but for now, I just do something like that, which should be groomed in one direction. And obviously, we can increase the scale in here as well, which we want to do. So we want to make, to make them two times longer. And now we get longer guide curves. And unfortunately, it kind of resets the groom, so we just calm them again. So this is all groomed in one direction, right? And then you can add more um, guide curves if you want to have finer control on the position and the movement of this of the initial uh, curves so i'm just like roughly defining the shape if you get some intersections you can increase actually the collision tolerance to 0.1 or something i'm not sure why i had this so low um, so they should be going up a bit now in fact if you press b you have the brush tool and you can manipulate the brush size directly and M is for the strength. Okay, so this is something with the base direction, which I think is is okay. It's nothing too fancy, and as I said, I am not a groomer, and some of you guys possibly laugh. <laughs> okay, so the next step would be to have a more detailed direction, I guess. So you could create another guide curve, which we will do now. So I add another guide. And this is, let's say, call this guide underscore detail. And it's still hard to see. Oh, let's just first create. Maybe we get them now. Oh, there we go. Now it works. Now we see the guides, right? We should have seen this previously as well. I'm not sure why that did not happen. So this is now a more detailed guide. And we can now, um, if we want, we can have some longer hairs at the belly or something. So we can actually have a length brush. And this is now controlling the length. And it's important um, that you check this, the strength. Sometimes it's just way too strong and it gets really long really fast. So I'm having a smaller value and I'm just like clicking and softly making the changes here. 
think we actually are not on a proper uh, we should have enabled this guy I did not do that so now this one is enabled and now you can see that they are getting longer and they bend in the same direction so now I can actually go into the scalp layer again and do some more um, some combing or you can actually grab and position them properly but this is now for a bit detailed structure just some basic shapes I'm not sure it would possibly go down here some of them would stand up here on the back maybe a bit more and just that you know I'm not controlling the the main density I'm just controlling the yellow guide curves and they are they have an influence on the whole groom so this is how this guy works <clears throat> okay and then we can have some noise we can break this up a bit so you can see what's going on I'm at in introducing some noise which breaks up the soft a calmed look and obviously we can add some some bigger noise pattern as a modifier in the end which we will do as well and a good workflow would be to have several scalp layers so I just I just added now another one and now let's say I want to go crazy on the noise like this and now you can actually blend this guy in you see this is very convenient to add like soft detail just to control it a bit better um, so this would be my guide detail and on top of that we can now because we have the guides which give the direction and the length you can see this is now enabled and this is pretty convenient to work and if you want to increase the density we just go to the base and increase the multi density multiplier by two and we should get double the amount of fur with the same um, modifiers applied and it's a denser look which is pretty cool and on top of that we can now add different modifiers for instance uh, a noise which will give this like a broken up like scruffled look and obviously you can control the amount um, in the frequency and in the magnitude and there should also be some taper options to make them um, the, the, to change the length I think this is in the base right here or is it in the scale let's see where that is maybe I've messed it up already uh, let's see if we can find this. There should be a placement guide. If I can find it, I'm not sure. Where well, you can define the width. That's the noise, that's the base, placement, CV settings, density. Hmm. Okay, never mind. Or is it on here? Sorry. Oh, there it is. It's on the main description. There you have the width and the taper. Sorry about that. So um, now you can actually see if I bring in some taper, you can see that the tips of the of the fur gets gets uh, narrower, more shallow, which how a hair would be. So it has a thicker root, and then it gets really thin at the top, and this gives us a more natural looking uh, fur or hair strand. So that would be that and you obviously have a width ramp as well if you want to use that it is you have more control over this the taper is just a linear interpolation if you don't want to use that I think zero is the default then you can actually use also a width map which is kind of the same but you have more control so you can actually do some fancy things like this so it's thicker getting thicker thin and all that kind of thing so you have a bit more control of this guy um, let's just try to remove those uh, let's just do something softer you can have a soft fall off as well but Maya curves are not as nice I guess spline yeah something like that okay so this is then what we got and you can also hide the guide some somewhere I'm not sure exactly where it was but you can do that uh, mute as you see I'm not a groomer anyways um, so the next step would be to add more density I guess so let's try three okay so this is getting somewhere and let's make them a bit longer in the guide detail I think this is where we change the scale uh, did we actually paint the scale let's just add another scalp layer on top um, number three which I think it is yes so if I edit this and I bring in the length brush let's see what's going on now yeah you can actually control the length which is very nice now you can see how this behaves 
the groom is growing and getting longer especially on the downside here and I want to have some longer fur at the top as well just a bit differentiation and you can also use a parting parting brush so I'm add, adding another sculpt layer go to number four and then there's a, a part part brush which which parts the hair strands from uh, side to side you can see what's going on now it's being pushed uh, pushed outwards you can increase the magnitude so that it's a stronger effect and you can see what's going on here there we go you can also do that in a lower scalp layer and the base to have more control so let's just do it in here as well if it actually have, does anything not really and if this doesn't help you can actually really comp them apart so let's go into a comp brush sculpting layer 4 edit this guy and let's bring them apart a bit more something like this so I think this is getting somewhere let's check the outliner if we can actually s if we can hide these guys yeah there we go so I'm just hitting them in the outliner this is now what my current fur looks like I think this is pretty cool and maybe we can do a bit more we've got a bit more time to to play around with the with these settings and actually I have a pretty cool thing to show you which is called a collision object so if I add the modifier add a collision which is on top and let's for, say for instance you have a character like a a character which was shot on a camera so it's a real actor and he should be interacting with the fur or with the carpet or whatever and uh, let's just imagine that this sphere here is his hand and his hand is going over the fur right like this and then we want to see what he actually did so um, to do that I select um, go to collision and I want to add the selected object but it is it's hard because if you want to select this you cannot have this selected and vice versa so what I tend to do I copy the tab which, ex which um, extracts it from the attribute editor and then I can do my uh, select my hand object and add selected objects. So now um, this guy is active and it should control the groom. And it's hard to see, but it's actually bending and moving the fur. Currently, it might be that the collision is um, not like the collision distance is not high enough. So you can see now what's going on here. I'm actually pushing the fur apart, which is very nice. So if you have a, a interactive thing, like something is interactively moving, you can actually move this guy interactively and then in the end cache it out. So and another cool thing is you have the option to preserve deformations. So if that is enabled, it actually remembers how it was deforming it. So if I go down now, you can actually see how I am pushing out the groom on, out of the way. And I'm, I'm guess there's some options to not push it all the way through the objects. Um, I'm not sure how exactly that is done, but I'm pretty sure there is a way to to add a displacement back up so it's not pushing all the way down. Maybe the mask. Yeah, so the mask is actually kind of doing that, which is controlling the overall effect. Which is very cool and very awesome. I think if you animate that, you get a pretty cool result, especially on carpets or grass or something like that. So uh, if you uh, uncheck Preserve Deformation, it's back to the original. And I'm just uh, disabling the collision now. Let's see what we get here. As well, we have Clump, which is also very um, interesting and important for um, for animal fur. Because if they are, they are um, because of dirt and all the factors, rain and sand and dust and whatever, the hair, especially wet hair, creates clumps, which you can see right here. And the default is a bit too strong, and you can actually paint some maps on that, I'll, and I will show you that as well. So um, if you have the mask, you can actually paint a groom mask which or a groom intensity map right inside here. So to do that, I click on this brush right here, and this is my mask input. So let's just call this mask, and then it's clump, clump mask, right? The size is okay. I think one is on so I want it to be black which is zero and let's just create that map name cannot be empty so okay obviously it wants to have a path let's just I'm actually not sure how it where it would save it um, let's just go to I don't know assets 
Call this one clump mask. We'll see if this works. Clump mask. Okay, just wants a directory. So let's select this directory. And it's called mask clump. So let's try again. Create. Okay, I think it is black now. As you can see, there is no clumping happening right now. And I've got my tool brush at the bottom. So if I change the color to be white, wherever I paint, we should get a clumps happening. So if I um, paint, you can see something is going on. And if I release, you can see the clumps actually. So for now, let's just hide the fur. And let's go back to um, the detective and start painting some more let's see if we can get this back to work there we go and let's just for now paint something some rough shapes at the bottom here make the brush size bigger and keep painting so everything which is white now will get clumps right and then we can use shift to soften it out it doesn't work as good as i thought so let's see if we can we can actually control this um, softness somewhere. Which one is the blur? Color flood smear blur. There we go. And make this way stronger. Scale. No scale is that. I think then it's this guy. No. Whoa. I'm not sure how I would set the strength of this guy. I just want to have a soft fall off here. Opacity, flood paint, paint, blur intensity. There it is. So that's better. So I'm just softening out these brush strokes to get a softer fall off. And maybe we should just paint a bit more soft full of and you can actually use also brushes from uh, paint effects so if i would go to generate i would go get brush and then i would go to what do we have maybe clouds clouds is i guess interesting um i don't know let's try this guy does that work already yeah so now we have some weird cloud patterns which which should just help to break up things a bit better or we can use I don't know, fire maybe. Okay, it shouldn't be. Okay, maybe that was a bad idea. Can we undo this? Yeah. Um, I think cloud was then even the best option we had. Okay, never mind. Let's just uh, go back here. And control is the invert. So let's soften this guy out. And just uh, do some random things here. And maybe change the color to be not perfect uh, black. So something on top. So we have a bit of clumping on the top. Blending these together a bit more. And saving. And let's bring back the fur and see how it looks. Okay, so we got clumping. We got clumping here, here, and there. I want to have a bit more on the top. So let's uh, paint some more. Um, on the top okay so I'm just painting a bit more strength more color and we can actually if I just click and tap you can actually see the effect happening in real life uh, real time which is uh, pretty neat and it's very fast actually which is very convenient to work and I, I still don't have very much um, density so we can go up even further Anyways, I think this is for now enough. It's still very, very clean. Maybe we can add a bit more. <laughs> it's a bit addictive to create more and more detail. Um, so displacement, if, if you have a displacement map and you want to offset that a bit. Um, okay, let's try to... Can we actually preserve length? Um, what else can we do here? I was thinking that we could, could get some stray hairs or something. That would be interesting, but I couldn't find it just yet. So let's work a bit with the clump a bit more. If we can find some interesting effects which we can create. Offsetting it, curling orientation, variance. You see, I'm just like checking the values and see what's going on. This is the strength randomizer, clump variance. 
super nice to play around with. Okay, let's just on top of the clamp just add another noise just to break up the clump a bit so we get now noisy clumps which is also very cool looking and obviously you can paint masks for everything wherever you have this control you can uh, control the, the noise and I think this is now pretty smooth pretty cool it might be too clean this is now a groom tiger or whatever so let's say this is it and we want now to create the shader for this guy so this is the most simple part because we use interactive grooms it actually picks the UVs directly from the below surface and the below surface because we started out with a plane um, should have very simple um, UVs like just square UVs so if we assign a texture now we should actually get something pretty quick and it should look pretty quick uh, pretty good pretty quick hard words here okay so first of all let's head over to the World Wide Web and let's search for a tiger pattern not tiger woods tiger pattern okay images I think I use this guy which is pretty cool yeah this is like uh, pretty nice and obviously there, were, there are more advanced techniques to create shaders, especially with probability maps, which is a very advanced topic in shading and it gives you the most realistic shading results. Um, but I guess this would be too much for this current project, just because it is too advanced and it's uh, it would be something I would do for a paid tutorial, for instance, or if you would support me on Patreon um, and if I hit my goals, I would maybe create a really advanced tutorial on how to create um, fur maps using uh, probability maps which are very fancy and they give you the most detail and when I was working um, uh, on on the jungle book or actually I was working on the commuter and there we actually had to have proper grooms and we used this technique quite a bit which is very nice so now I messed up I call it tiger T but anyways so all the talking let's hide this guy let's hide the fur for now hit save and let's head over to the high uh, not note editor this time not the hyper shade just because i can doesn't matter ai here there we go um oh that's actually the deprecated one ai standard hair that's a new name that's the one we want to use and for now let's just assign this um, to oh let's just create another one let's use a blin which will be my viewport shader so I delete the shading engine and I assign this the hair standard hair to the base view and to the fur and hit assign and in here we have actually in the shading engine we have surface and we have Arnold tabs so the surface is the viewport shader and in this surface I want to hook up the blin and in the Arnold surface shader I want to hook up the hair shader so in the viewport we should uh, we should now see the blin and when we render it we should get the proper AI uh, standard hair so the first thing we want to do is hook up the textures using a file texture read there we go and this will be our fancy tiger pattern which should be here bring this guy in uh, make sure it's an sRGB space because we got this from the internet and this will connect to the color so let's see in the viewport if we get something there we go obviously we need to rotate it so to do that node editor place to texture node and rotate this guy uh, by 90 And this is now coincidentally looking pretty awesome. I'm not sure if this if the direction is the correct one, but it might just work. So you can see here now the shadowing is built in, which is in the real life not good because you would just need a flat surface and no no shadows. Um, but this is just uh, how you get the shader working, right? So and let's just for now create a light, simple area light from the top. Bring this guy up, make it bigger, like this, and let's remove the normalize and bring an exposure to maybe five. Hit save and render this guy. 
So now we should just see this normal geo. Ooh, that is interesting, isn't it? I'm not even sure what it is. Not even sure what this guy is. I guess it's something related with the blin which I just connected because I rarely do that. I just wanted to be fancy, which did not work. So let's just try to first create the TX files. So this guy, uh, select untile, let's just create TX for this. So now we should have a TX, there we go. And let's just try again. Okay, I think it does not like that. So because I assigned the fur, I don't know. Different approach. What did I do here? View paints, outliner, there we go. So instead of assigning the hair, let's just uh, assign this guy. Okay, let's just create another, or let's do this a bit. Sorry for this confusion. So now it should just be the Blinic connected. Let's see what's going on now. Okay, so I did not like that, definitely. So now we got that working, which is good. Let's just reduce the UI threads, uh, increase the UI threads, uh, reduce the resolution to 50. So we get a bit faster feedback. View panes. Come on. Okay, that is working. We got our stuff connected. Perfect saving. And now let's bring in the fur. If I unhide this, let's see. You can actually see already that the fur is tinted properly as well, which is very cool. And you can see each fur strand has a different color right in the viewport directly. So if you have quick changes, you can see it live in the new viewport 2.0 which is very convenient. And obviously we can still increase the density, which we should do now. If we go um, to the fur interactive grooming tools, go to the base and just increase the multiplier, let's say by five. And now we get more detailed or more, I don't know, just more hair, which is interesting. So saving and let's see what happens if we run it right now. we get a big explosion, whatever this is. I'm not sure if this is now correct. It seems um, very close up. But I guess this is now the blend connected to the fur. So anyways, let's now connect or assign a standard hair to the fur. Assign this guy, get a new shading engine and same texture connects um, to the base like this no melanin and for the blin let's just use a gray or something like that or uh, yeah let's add no spec ideally you would use a standard shader for this without anything without let's just do that to do it properly AI standard shader standard surface damn it there we go and this guy connects up to the surface shader and we want to have something like this no no spec so this should now render the the, the back should be gray and the fur should be standard fur okay so this did happen we have now a, a gray base and then the fur obviously which is looking like this rendered with a standard hair shader so let's zoom in in here a bit to kind of create the same the same view I had in in the image here in, in this guy so obviously currently this is not looking as nice because of sampling and because of the light and all these things so you would have need to have a better light placement, so something I guess which goes into the groom direction, and obviously a environment light because this is just one hard key area, key light, and nothing for the environment. So let's create a sky dome light, and let's actually bring those into the light group like so. 
and quickly connect a light AI image HDI let's just use um, real texture what do we have here some outdoor stuff room I think this is an outside one as well yeah let's just use this one there's already a TX file so let's just load these guys um, let's see what we get now okay this is better we get now some environments a bridge and we get the tiger pattern and obviously now this is a sampling um, problem so we have now and we actually can definitely work with the shader a bit so first uh, let's just reduce the amount of the um, the domite by minus two maybe and incre increase the samples to three and go to the area light and have two light samples uh, let's just maybe increase this to six make this a warm light uh, something like this maybe so now we have a stronger key direction which should illuminate the back of the tiger fur or if we go from the top you should see it a bit better and now we can actually go into the shader and see what we can tweak there I have a dedicated hair tutorial on all these values so I, I won't really be doing any proper shading in here I just wanted to show you how you get the UVs working properly with this guy so um, we have roughness so if you have a shiny tiger you would obviously bring this guy down so this is very clean and if you have a dirty like a scruff dusty tiger it would go up to four or even higher depends on the look you want to get and um, what else is there these are artistic controls and this is the basic setup so you mostly just work with these guys here these ones are breaking physicality so and then you have the I think it's on the shape of the fur description you should get some uh, Arnold attributes as well like opaque if you want to have opacity you would do it right here if you want to have minimal pixel width if you have very thin hair you should have something in here to define a default width and then you can have the different controls for modes thick like which is actually a physical tube or a ribbon which is always facing to the camera so you can see what we get here we can you see that we have this fall off and the fall off happens because we have long hair like longer hair than expected so the black parts are being covered by the shorter hair so to compensate for that we can actually go into our um, in our interactive groom editor and go to the detail and find which one controls the length this guy I think and this one as well no this one this is the breakup yeah I think actually these guys are pretty cool uh, what else do we have what does this guy do not much scale let's see if we can actually bring it down here this does also nothing let's see if we can do it in this one does this have a scale yeah let's see yeah so we can actually shorten the room right here and you can see how helpful this is it's all live and it's all working so if I would just render now we should get shorter hair and we should more she see more lines instead of these yeah there we go it's more detailed now and obviously if you bring back the base texture um, you, sh you see it even stronger so if I would connect the same file node to my base color right here with a lower base we should actually see it even more more prominent in the viewport well, let's see if that if that works yeah there we go now you get these dark lines which define the back of the tiger's fur and obviously now um, you can beautify it you can add more detail you can scruff it up whatever you want to do this is very good for practical hair so if you want to render depth of field or if you want to go close up and what I always do I create a my aim object which is in most cases just a simple uh, locator 
and I locate this guy uh, broke it what did I do there we go so wherever the locator is I position this on the surface with V you can snap two surfaces uh, like this and now let's say this is my render camera with my fill gate enabled film gate enabled and I want to have this this point in focus right so what you do you go to display in the menu and go to heads up display and say object details and then you get a distance from camera and this is 10.043 so in your render camera which is in this in this instance a perspective under Arnold tab you have depth of field and the focus distance should be 10.043 if I remember correctly let's double check yeah that should be correct and perspective shape and then you can enable this guy so for the test I just hide the fur quickly save and start the Arnold render and frame all and now I think we need to enable this still oh it is enabled so why does this not render maybe because we don't have any aperture so let's bring in the aperture and that's this should now start blurring and you can see directly what's going on the bag is now the back of the tiger is now blurred and this region is very sharp and you can control the aperture size which makes the, sh the focus region larger and the rest um, not so soft so this is pretty cool sharp region is right where the locator is and now let's stop this guy stop this guy and unhide the fur so we get that guy back Arnold render go and now you should see some out of focus fur here let's see when it resolves yeah it's one un, uh, blurry color here and this should be the focus region and I think it is it's definitely working so this is pretty cool and obviously you can control the effect using the um, the, the, the strength the aperture size is controlling the strength so let's just go a bit bit less let's say um, 0.1 and for the final uh, image, I will render this guy out, and I increase my render settings. So I would, I guess, go to um, 6 a maybe to maybe to three. This would be pretty high settings. Uh, let's see the depth. It's two. That's fine. And let's actually use clamping if we get some fireflies. Let's just do that to maybe five, just to get rid of a bit of sample noise. Okay, so thank you guys for tuning in and this is how you create a simple fur setup and grooming it and assigning a texture to that. I hope you did enjoy this. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it and obviously please uh, go on my Patreon if you want to support me. I would be happy to get your patronage. Thank you guys for tuning in. See you in the next one.